On 5th of January 2020, I uploaded my first video on a CD for a one cent based LED tree, which was inspired from Greg Scott's LED tree. But unlike mine, his was simply built around a power resistor. Now, fast forward a year later, I have come with this Arduino based LED tree as a successor to my old one. All of this is run by an Arduino Uno and a pair of CIF register. So now, let's get started with the build. First of all, we'll have to make some necessary physical changes to our previous LED tree. Here I'm organizing the LEDs in the bottom two layers by cutting off their cathodes. Meanwhile, the cathode rings of the LEDs in the top two layers will be terminated permanently. Next, I connected 330 ohm resistors to the cathode of all the LEDs. Then I solder wires on the other end and cover them using 2mm heatsink tubes. Now bring in some male and female headers and connect the other end of the wires to the male headers. The LEDs in the top two layers are connected individually while they are organized in pairs of two in the bottom two layers. Now this was done because I only had two CIF registers. But if you plan to build this yourself then I highly recommend using three CIF registers. Now that will produce a smoother animation at the cost of extra wiring. I will now show you the order in which the LEDs are soldered to this tree. First, I will connect 5 volts to the common anode of the tree. Since these LEDs have a common anode, we will be switching the cathode via these male jumper headers right here. So here is the order in which the LEDs are connected. We have LED 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Let's take a look at the example code that I wrote. First of all, I defined the pins of the Arduino that will be used as const in data type, as the pin number will remain constant all throughout the code. The comments on the right hand side instruct which pins of the CIF register connects to which digital pin of the Arduino. The void setup will declare all the previously defined pins as outputs. I wrote this byte array which basically creates the infamous night order LED effect. The night array LED effect is basically a LED moving back and forth. It requires two of these arrays to accomplish this task. You might have noticed there are only 12 variables inside the parentheses rather than 16. That's because in the breadboard setup data put up together, I am only using 12 outputs of the shift registers. But do keep in mind that in the final code and the setup, I will be utilizing all these 16 outputs. The B in front of the variable stands for byte. This tells the audio that the variables showcased here are in binary, not in decimal. Without the B, the Arduino will think of it as the number 10 in decimal. Each bit here represents the state of the output pins of the CIF register. For instance, a 0 represents the low state while a 1 represents the high state. In the void loop, we first create a for loop. It is initialized with int i equals 0, with the condition if it's less than or equal to 11. If it's less than 11, we then increment the value of i by 1. Inside the for loop, we first digital write the R clock or CIF register clock pin low. Next, we use the shift out function of the Arduino, which has been specifically designed for driving serial in parallel SIF register. With the help of this function, the Arduino sends data into the memory of the SIF register in bit by bit format. In the shift out function, we have the data pin or the serial pin, the clock pin or the storage register clock pin, then we have our bit order, and at last, we have our value to be sent into the SIF register. In the bit order, we have LSB first. LSB first simply stands for the least significant bit first or the rightmost bit first. Basically, the Arduino starts to send data into the SIF register starting from the rightmost bit and ending at the leftmost one. While MSB first stands for most significant bit first, that is the leftmost bit first. In this scenario, the data is sent into the SIF register starting from the leftmost bit and ending at the rightmost one. Now let's take a quick look on how the Arduino sends data into the SIF register. The SIF register that I use is a 74HC595 serial in parallel out SIF register. The 74HC595 SIF register stores the data from the serial pin into its memory on the rising edge of the SR clock pin. Let's say we wanted to send in the value 5, which when converted into binary is 101. 
Starting from the least significant bit first, first the Arduino pulls the IR clock or shift register clock pin low, then the serial pin is pulled high. Next the SR clock pin is pulled high, and on the rising edge of this pin, the shift register stores a value of 1 into its memory. The SR clock pin is later pulled low. Now to send in a 0, the serial pin is first pulled low, while the SR clock pin is pulled high. Since the serial pin is kept low, a value of 0 is stored in the memory on the rising edge of the SR clock pin. Lastly, we pull the serial pin high and on the rising edge of the SR clock pin, a value of 1 is stored in the shift register. And thus, we finally store the value of 101 in the shift register. At last, we pull the R clock or shift register clock pin high, which finally pulls the contents from the memory of the shift register at the output. Now to create the night array effect, we use the values from night1 and night2 arrays that we created previously. Arrays are zero reference, that means the counting for them starts from zero. So at index position 0, we have this value, at index position 1, we have this, and at index position 2, we have this value, and so on. The last value is at index position 11. In this shift out function, we use the values from night1 and night2 arrays. In the square brackets, we use i as the index number. So when i equals 0, we have this value, when i equals 1, we have this one, and at i equals 2, we have this value, and so on. Let's say the index value is 0, so we send this value from night2 array into the first shift register. Then we send this value from night1 array into the first shift register. When this happens, the value that was previously in the first shift register will move into the second shift register through the h' prime output of the first shift register, while the new value gets stored into the first shift register. Since we use a for loop, we keep repeating these steps, thereby creating the night array effect. I wrote some more code and created this effect which emulates a moving train. This is how it looks like on a breadboard. And here's what it looks like on the array tree. At last I created a schematic whose link is in the description below and sorted everything on a piece of purpleboard. To make all the necessary connections on the purpleboard, I used single core breadboard hookup wire. And the nifty thing about this breaker board is that it plugs directly onto the Arduino thereby limiting any extra wires. Finally, this project is complete. Go check out Grace Scott, he makes awesome content. Also, I bought myself a couple of these Atmega at microcontrollers. So in my next video, I plan to substitute the Arduino Uno with this Atmega at microcontroller. And also add a push button for toggling through the effects manually. Well, if you are interested in those, then consider subscribing and I'll see you.